So, hello friends. So I'll be talking on this uh, physiology topic, transpulmonary pressure, just the physiology aspect of it and uh, how is it relevant from practical standpoint and how do we apply this concept in our practical day-to-day -day ICU care. So this question has been asked for DNB as a uh, short note. So it is important for all the trainees to have a bit of clarity on physiological understanding of this transpulmonary pressure and how is it useful from the practical standpoint. So maybe in just eight to 10 minutes, I may be covering this. So I wish to thank my colleague Bhavya who also helped in some of the content of this. So when you look at the lung, so when this question is asked in exam, so if I'm correcting a paper, one would expect that you explain this with the schematic diagrams, it makes life more easy. Otherwise, it's not really easy to explain the whole concept of transpulmonary pressure. So if you schematically look at the lung this way, and this is the pleura, so the gray area is the pleura. So transpulmonary pressure is basically a difference between the alveolar pressure and the pleural pressure. So the alveolar pressure, the way we measure it with the P plat or plateau pressure. So it can, you can call it as alveolar pressure or plateau pressure minus the intrapleural pressure. So the difference between this is what is called as transpulmonary pressure. So then the whole question is, we have maneuvers to measure P plat. So we do end inspiratory hold and measure P plat, which is a reflection of your alveolar pressure. But how do we measure intrapleural pressure? So intrapleural measure, pressure is measured by this esophageal balloon. So that is where the whole value of this esophageal balloon catheter, which is placed in the esophagus, it takes a measurement of intrapleural pressure. And, and so the transpulmonary pressure is basically a difference between alveolar pressure and intrapleural pressure. And the one we measure is P plat, which is the representative of alveolar pressure. So it's P plat minus intrapleural pressure. And P plat is usually positive. And as you know, in a spontaneously breathing patient, why transpulmonary pressure is important is because it is dependent on the pleural pressure and the pleural pressure in a spontaneously breathing patient is a negative pressure. And another important thing for all our trainees to understand is the negative pleural pressure increases in a chest pathology. So if you have atelectasis, if you have a pneumonia, if you have ARDS, the negative pressure tends to increase when there is one breathing. I'll show you later on. So the intrapleural pressure is negative, plateau pressure is positive. Transpulmonary pressure can sort of fluctuate between little positive and negative. So that is our conceptual understanding. So this is just the waveforms uh, in relation to the lung volume of transpulmonary pressure. And whenever we talk about transpulmonary pressure, so the pressure we talk in the setting of inspiration and we talk in the setting of expiration. So in the previous video, when I spoke about COPD, the whole problem lied with expiration. But when we talk about transpulmonary pressure, the whole problem rests with your inspiratory problem. See, because I said inspiration is an active process, expiration is passive process. So the whole pressure effect and the settings we do in pneumonia, ARDS, mainly the whole role of transpulmonary pressure comes into four in a lung pathology if you're dealing with a patient with ARDS. So where your inspiratory efforts is what will cause all the changes and all the problems and our understanding of inspiration is more important because expiration we do not have control and that is where the problem during expiration is not much. It is mainly during the inspiration that we have more problems. So we need to understand as to how these pressures vary during inspiration. So again, another representative diagram. Uh, so when you look at it with a proper lung, so the P plat is, as I said, it's the alveolar pressure that you would see, which is measured as P plat and the intrapleural pressure. And the difference is transpulmonary pressure is P plat minus intrapleural pressure. Just another diagram in the lung. So the esophageal catheter will be speaking in the esophagus. So the difference between these two is what you measure as transpulmonary pressure. So another important caveat that we need to look at is, so what we call as intrapleural pressure, which is measured by the esophagus, ordinarily we take it as it is equivalent, but we need to bear in mind this, there is another component to this called the chest wall. The chest wall also has a bearing on the intrapleural pressure. So because the chest recoil characteristics get affected in ICU for various reasons, which I will tell. And this also has a bearing on the intrapleural pressure. So, but what your transpulmonary pressure does is it is partitioning. It is eliminating 
or it is taking as chest pressure not having an effect so it partitions between the chest wall issues and it only takes your alveolar pressure and the intrapleural pressure so the chest wall pressure is taken as not being affected but in icu there are various conditions which affect the chest wall recoil or the chest wall mechanics this also has a bearing on the intrapleural pressure the intrapleural pressures can get worsened with lot of chest wall deformities and that also has a bearing on increasing your transpulmonary pressure so that is something you need to understand so when we took at when we look at the lung apparatus the transpulmonary pressure is a reflection of pleural pressure and the alveolar pressure so lung and the pleura but it does not take into account the chest wall pressure changes because that also has a bearing on transpulmonary pressure but when we measure we we mean we are only taking the lung and the intrapleural pressure so again this is to show that uh, how your transpulmonary pressure changes with your lung volume as you see this is the transpulmonary pressure in high volume or like emphysema patient it has a higher volume and this is in normal and in low compliance this is the waveform as to how your transpulmonary pressure looks so especially transpulmonary pressure increases with your lower compliance with the rds sort of a patient and transpulmonary pressure will tend to be low in a emphysema or a normal patients so in ventilated patients in a volume targeted ventilation you will see a waveform like this so the red one is with a low compliance where your transpulmonary pressure increases or you know, the the green one is normal and here is the emphysema patient where compliance is normal or increased where transpulmonary pressures are less so this is uh, what we see in the pressure volume curve in the ventilator so now we'll talk a little bit on the bearing of chest wall pressure so i showed you a diagram so when we ask about maybe transpulmonary pressure any examiner it is good that if you put it in a schematic diagram and tend to explain as to how the pressures are affected in different conditions so i already said that esophageal manometer measures it, it takes the surrogate of your pleural pressure so there are conditions where esophageal pressures are high so the increase in the esophageal pressure happens when there is reduced compliance of the chest wall so the reduced compliance of the chest wall happens when there is pleural effusion or when there is chest wall edema or when there is a chest wall trauma so any conditions which affect the chest wall where you have sequestration of fluid in the muscles where there is pleural effusion or where there is chest wall trauma or massive ascites intra abdominal hypertension obesity all these conditions lead to reduction in the chest wall compliance which increases the esophageal pressure which means your pleural pressures will go up and then your uh, transpulmonary pressure also tends to go up when you, so any condition where your lung compliance is down like in ARDS your transpulmonary pressure goes up if your chest wall is affected because of pleural effusion obesity intra abdominal hypertension ascites chest wall all this can increase transpulmonary pressure because chest wall also has a bearing on your pleural pressure so that is something you need to understand conceptually so as i said the esophageal pressure has a bearing it correlates with the intrapleural pressure and this can get affected when there is mediastinal artifact or any of these conditions are present your esophageal pressure can go up and your transpulmonary pressure obviously will be higher so and transpulmonary pressure can be used for the setting of the peep also so it is suggested or desirable that we keep during end expiration transpulmonary pressure at 0 to 10 but as i said that whole problem of transpulmonary pressure happens mainly in the inspiration problem because as i said the whole concept of transpulmonary pressure we have to focus on inspiration how it has an impact during expiration it is not a problem because the peep as you say transpulmonary pressure will be less but during inspiration transpulmonary pressure goes up because of your inspiratory pressure so we have to keep it less than 25 centimeters at the end of inspiration and you can look at transpulmonary as p-plat where we say p-plat has to be less than 30 should be little less than that is what your target should be so now so now the whole question is we have understood physiologically the correlation as to how your pleural pressure and your uh, alveolar pressure has a bearing on transpulmonary pressure but how do we apply this in our clinical practice in patients with compliance issues like ARDS. So that I think I put it in a very figuratively in a schematic way for you to have an understanding how 
this concept of transponder pressure can be applied from the practical sense. Okay, so I just go slowly here. So here you have, as I said, the problem of transponder is during inspiration. Look only during inspiration, during expiration. So what what happens? You have a this is you consider this as a lung with a pneumonia or atelectasis. So you have a diseased alveoli here where alveoli is collapsed. To open this, what do you do? You apply a peep of flex pipe. So during expiration, there is no role of inspiratory pressure, right? So there's no you don't put inspiratory pressure. What what is needed in expiration is the peep. So here you put a peep of pipe. So your alveolar pressure is pipe. Airway pressure or alveolar pressure is pipe. So your transpulmonary pressure during expiration is, which I said, what is transpulmonary pressure? It is P-plat or alveolar pressure minus pleural pressure, which is alveolar pressure is 5 minus of minus pleural pressure, it becomes 6. And I said, wherever there is a disease, your pleural pressure will be high because wherever there is disease, you, there will be more negative pressure generated in, a, in, a, in an area where there is pathology in a spontaneous deep breathing. So what is transpulmonary pressure here? So it is five minus of minus two, which is seven. So there is this is this is no problem. But I have already said your whole concept of transpulmonary pressure and the problems of it is with inspiration. So in inspiration, you are putting inspiratory pressure. So there is a peep of five. Then there is an inspiratory pressure, which is pressure support you put of eight in ventilator. So in a normal lung, this 8 is adding on to 5. 5 plus 8 is 13. So what is happening here? Normal lung, you are causing over distension. Dependent lung, so your transpulmonary pressure is 15, which is 13 minus of minus 2. Here what is happening? Your negative pleural pressure is more because it is a diseased lung during inspiration. So transpulmonary pressure becomes 18. So you have not done anything to the diseased alveoli. But by putting pressure support of 8, what we have done is we have over distended the normal alveoli during inspiration. What is that it manifests in our ICU with this problem is it says volutrauma. Volutrauma is because of the shearing forces, closing and opening of the normal alveoli in the presence of the pathology, there is an over distension which we call as volutrauma. This is how we apply this concept of transpulmonary pressure, why it is important. So we don't want any of this. Both are bad because you have a diseased lung and you have put in the parameters which has really not opened up the or recruited the collapsed alveoli. Right? You have not opened up the collapsed alveoli. But in return, you have over distended your normal alveoli causing volume from. Okay? We don't want this. We'll go to the next scenario. So now a clever register comes. He's added a peep of 10. So that's good. So expiration, it's not a problem. So expiration, you have given 10 of PEEP, pleural pressure, so transpulmonary pressure is 11, transpulmonary uh, pressure is 12. But in during inspiration, you, you are hoping it will open up. So yes, you have put a PEEP of 8, 10 and you put pressure support of 8. So 10 plus 8 is 18. So your transpulmonary pressure is become 20 on non-dependent. Dependent, because you have added pressure support, so transpulmonary pressure is become 23. So the sort of alveoli is sort of opened up because you have increased the peep here. But is this okay? So this 23, because it causes atelecto trauma, which means it has opened, but it is the pressure for, or something which is not safe. And this causes something called atelecto trauma. And this is also something which we don't want because we want peep to open up. Here is because in see why I say atelecto trauma in expiration it's not open, but in inspiration it has opened, which means there is a shearing force, there is an opening and closing. This shearing force with an inappropriate peep is what is calling atelecto trauma, even this is not something which is desirable. So the register also has done a right thing by increasing the peep, but by putting pressure support and peep not being optimal, he, he still kept it collapsed in expiration, but in inspiration it is opened up. Opening and closing is causing atelecto trauma. Before you saw normal one getting over distended, it was volute trauma. Okay. Now a third register comes. So he's a very clever guy. He puts 14 peep. So during expiration, 14 peep has opened up this collapsed alveoli. And I see transpulmonary pressure is 16, 18. So it's done a good thing. He's increased the peep, opened up the recruitable alveoli. Let us use the word recruitable rather than collapsed alveoli. Recruitable alveoli. But then he, what he does, the clever register again has put pressure support of 8. 
So what happens? Your transformative pressure is 26 on inspiration. On, on the recruitable lung, it became 30. So is this desirable? So you see all the four alveoli are open. During inspiration, it's open. During expression. But here, there is a little bit of a high transformative because you know plateau pressure has to be less than 30. It's gone up to 30 here. So this is the, he has recruited well. Recruited well, but with possible over distension. This can cause barotrauma. So has your registrar done the right thing? He has done the right thing in expiration. But he has not done, he or she has not done the right thing during inspiration. Inspiration, he can cause barotrauma and emphysema that can happen. So this is also right thing. So after that, maybe a consultant will come and then he does this. He puts a peep, which is fantastic. He opens up both alveoli. He or she opens up both alveoli during expiration. And during inspiration, what is the clever consultant does? He reduces the pressure support. He, can, he, he puts the peep at 14, but keeps a very less pressure support. So what that has done, so it has kept the plateau pressure less than 30, 22, and during uh, and in the non-dependent, 19. So this is a state compatible with lung protection. This is the whole concept as to how we apply the concept of transplantary pressure, why it is important. Because you are inspirated, I said the whole understanding of transplantary pressure is with inspiration. It is an inspiratory pressure that you have to keep an eye. If you keep very high inspiratory pressures, it will lead to uh, del deleterious changes or detrimental changes by increasing your transplantary pressure, which is a difference between the alveolar pressure or P-plat and the intrapural pressure. Bear in mind, this we are talking about on only lung pathology. At the same time, concurrently, you need to look at chest wall also, which also has a bearing on increasing the transpulmonary pressure because the pleural pressure is influenced by both the pathology in the lung and with the chest wall also. So this is the concept. So I request every trainee if a question, this question was asked in DNB. If it is asked, please put these figures because if you don't put these schematic diagrams, it's very hard to explain how this whole transpulmonary pressure. So one figure with a lung, pleura and a chest wall is not difficult to draw and put the pressures. The examiner will instantly know that you have conceptually understood this very well. And uh, it gives a lot of confidence into all of us in having good clarity on this understanding. So hope this is made clear. So you can visit my website, www.dr.dfrankford.com to rehear to this lecture. So thank you, Vanadol. So this is the right sort of measures. So thank you all.